protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News with a story here that is surely going to get under your skin. Uh, anybody who knows out about this time of year, there's a big festival in Nevada called Burning Man, and it's now grown to about 70,000 people that show up in the middle of a desert, uh, the Black Rock Desert, uh, which is composed out of a, uh, a silt-type material that they call the playa. There's a report from the Huffington Post, which states, Burning Man is infested with tiny desert-resistant bugs. And if you look through some of the tweets here, you can see some of the bugs um, infesting carpets. Uh, there's a picture of them at night. There's an interesting-looking close-up. It's another picture here of bugs on some tires. They look like the common stink bug, along with some other really small little critters. Now, I actually went to the Burning Man Festival in 2002 and 2003, and one thing that I found very pleasant is that there were no insects around. There was no mosquitoes. There were no flies. There was nothing. So this is very odd for bugs to be appearing in the middle of the desert where there's no vegetation, there's no water unless you bring it in with you. So how are these bugs arriving in the middle of the desert? Well, some people think they might have been brought in on a shipment of wood. Very plausible. Uh, another explanation is that fires in the area, uh, you have fires up in Oregon, you have fires in California, and that those are actually pushing the bugs into the desert. Eh, maybe, I don't know. And, uh, other people are suggesting climate change is the culprit. So anytime anything happens out of the ordinary, it must be blamed on climate change. Of course, we see that in the Huffington Post. Um, but one other theory that's been floated around is that this might be a revenge attack. And let me explain a little bit more. Um, the Black Rock Desert is run by the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management. This is the same group that went against Clive and Bundy and actually stole his cattle um, because they were supposedly grazing on BLM lands. Well, every year the BLM gets paid a large amount of money from the organizers of Burning Man. This year they came up with some demands they wanted. Here's the article out of the Reno Gazette Journal. BLM wants $1 million VIP compound from Burning Man. And this article appeared in late July and talks about what the BLM was demanding from the organizers of Burning Man to actually, they wanted them to set up a camp for them with running water, flushing toilets, 24-hour access to ice cream, air conditioning, among other things. Here's a diagram of the actual layout that they wanted. You could see the trailers, uh, private trailers that they want for people, other little rooms for visiting VIPs. You can see the bathroom areas. And uh, Burning Man is, is set upon this uh, sort of theory of self-reliance where they want people to bring in their own stuff. Um, nothing is really provided to you. Other porta potties are there and they're cleaned out, uh, you know, every couple days or so. Um, also, these guys wanted vanity mirrors, refrigerators, couches, um, and they wanted the flushing toilets to be cleaned daily by Burning Man staff and uh, laundry with washers and dryers. So they were really asking for a lot. The organizers of Burning Man estimated it was going to cost them an extra million dollars to fulfill these requests. And they flat out denied the request. And then on uh, August 10th, the BLM actually withdrew that request to have these extravagant amenities set up for them. So could it be that in revenge for that, they figured out a way to transport a bunch of bugs in? Who knows? One thing that is for certain, though, our country does have a history of using insects as bioweapons. And let me explain that more. You may have heard of Lyme disease and that it's carried by ticks, usually deer ticks. Well, investigators have gone through and looked at this, and they say it's a high, high, high probability that this disease, this Lyme disease, is man-made, and it was produced out of Plum Island, which is a research facility on the East Coast. Uh, you might have seen Jesse Ventura do a piece on it in his Conspiracy Theory TV show a few years ago. Well, back in 2010, DHS estimated there was a 70% chance that a disease would escape from the Plum Island Biodefense Lab. And then from the article, Americans are victims of an undeclared war that makes universal health care unaffordable. This is from Barbara Minton. And at the end of this article, she brings up Plum Island. Uh, Michael Carroll's Lab 257, the disturbing story of the government's secret Plum Island germ laboratory, was released in 2004. This book explores the insidious connection between the Department of Homeland Security's uh, biolab at Plum Island and the newest inexplicable diseases. 
and presents compelling amount of evidence that Lyme disease was created at Plum Island and unleashed on the American public using ticks as a vector. The deadly outbreak of West Nile virus and its connection to Plum Island is also documented. And in 2005, the Centers for Disease Control admitted that Lyme disease was a potential bioterrorism agent. And this is not the first time insects have been used in warfare. Uh, you could go all the way back to the Civil War. Uh, the South accused the North of introducing the Harlequin bug, and it destroyed a lot of the crops in the South. It was a big pest. The North denied this, and then later it came out that maybe these actually came from Mexico, although nothing has been proven conclusively. Now, here's an interesting story. Florida dengue fever outbreak leads back to CIA and Army experiments. And this goes back to July of 2010, where up to 10% of a town population in Key West all got dengue fever. And this can be traced back. The CIA has been working with this agent for over 50 years. People have uncovered operations in Pakistan using dengue fever and also back in the early 80s in Cuba. So it is not above and beyond the government to go out and use bugs to attack people and populations or just put things out there and see how they spread. Now, Gizmodo recently came out with this article. We've identified those bugs infesting Burning Man, and it's not pretty. They've had some entomologists identify some of the bugs. The bigger ones, those green ones there, as you can see on the tire, are being uh, called like an average stink bug, ones that you touch or kill, and they put out that nasty smell. Now, the other ones, the little bitty ones, they are uh, known as nisus or seed bugs. And they think there's several species of those. Reports are coming out that the insects are biting people and leaving red welts. Well, the seed bugs actually use their nose as a proboscis and they, they poke it into your skin to look for water. So that might be what people are confusing with bites. And they're also saying that some of these seed bugs, they feed on mustard plants and they might be filled with this mustard oil. And when people are slapping them, the mustard oil is getting into the skin and actually causing welts. It's always interesting when scientists get involved because they usually provide the most plausible explanation. That is, of course, unless they're being paid by giant big pharma to, uh, uh, to just rubber stamp vaccines on the public. But here the entomologists have, have come out and said, probably nothing to worry about, and they may go away in a few days. The desert heat may kill them. So there's a lot of theories out there about why the bugs are invading Burning Man. I can say from personal experience, I never saw a bug anywhere near that area. It's, it seemed to be devoid of life other than the humans that were there. But nobody really knows how they got there. One thing is for certain, though, our government has been caught using different types of insects as warfare agents for many years now. This has been Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. We take you now back to the main studio. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. <laughs> 